Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. This is a reaction to what is each US state's oldest company. And I mean, I don't know if I'll know any of these because there's obviously companies that are old in the US that I will know, but the oldest one from each state, there may just be some random states or there'll be some state, there'll be some, I said random states, I mean random companies, or there will be some companies that have been going on for so long and are some of the biggest companies. But like my bank, for example, I didn't realize it was like 400 years old, which is crazy to think that the bank that I use currently has been going on for 400 years. I can't really comprehend that, but that's just how it is, I guess. Um, but we're going to check this out and see some of these companies or how old they are and from what states they're from. And that's pretty much it. Hope we're going to enjoy. Let's get into this video. Links also in the description to my Patreon where you can see reactions that I can't post to YouTube. And let's jump into this. A good amount of time ago, I did a video on the oldest company in each country. From Yo, one in Italy that done it for each country, that would be a fascinating one. Makes bells from the Vatican to an over 800 year old Japanese company. I thought for this video, it would be interesting to focus on one specific country, the United States of America, and find out which is the oldest company in each state. In this case, the oldest doesn't mean the first to be established, but the one that has existed for the longest time up to today. An important mention to a key source for this video, this article by Mark Pierce, Wyoming attorney, who wrote this piece about the topic. So without further ado, let's jump into it. We're going to start at the youngest of the old, moving our way up to the oldest ones. But if you don't want to stick around and wait, you can just find it in the timestamps below and skip ahead to the oldest ones. First, Oklahoma. Ranking at number 50, the oldest company in the state of Oklahoma is BC Clark Jewelers. They've been around since 1892. They are a jewelry store, as the name states, and they're located in Oklahoma City, having three stores there. At the time yeah. they were founded, the first store opened in Purcell in what was then known as Indian Territory. The BC in the name are the initials of its founder, a man called Benton Clyde Clark. They're a local store, but apparently known countrywide due to a famous holiday jingle that they created for an ad campaign. A fun oh, wow. fact is that the jingle has played in their campaigns since 1956 and might actually have the record for the oldest continuous jingle in the US. Next is Minnesota, and its oldest business is an auctioneer service founded in 1886. As the previous one, it takes its name from the founder, and it's called Fred W. Rad and Sons. Founded in the city of New Germany, it's interesting to notice how necessarily the oldest businesses are out east, as we'll see ahead, because these were the first settled areas of the US. The territories and then states out west had later settling, and so younger business set up. Fred & Sons specialized in live auctions when it first was founded, but has since evolved with the times, expanding into phone bidding and now online auctions. I guess that's the reason why they've stuck around for so long. Not only is it a business that is everlasting, but they also have adapted to the times. Moving to number 48 is South Dakota. It's important to remind you that this isn't the 48th oldest business in the country. These are all the oldest business in their respective state. They're just ranked by age along with the oldest business of other states. In South Dakota, the oldest business is Lux Marketplace. It's a restaurant and bar founded in 1883 in Sioux Falls by Carl Look. I, mean, I wonder if any of, the, any of these are like chains. So for example, if this is just a one-off restaurant or if this is actually around maybe South Dakota or a region around it, or maybe the whole country, I don't know. But trained for three years in Germany to learn to be a butcher. This is another example of a business that adapted and changed with time. They began as a meat counter, but then evolved to sell baked goods, cheese, okay. and also beer, turning it into a place where you can consume the products as well by opening a restaurant and a bar inside it. Damn. The only difference is that it's no longer owned by the original family. In Arizona, we have another restaurant and bar, the Palace Restaurant and Saloon. Having saloon in the name already gives us an old establishment vibe. That's founded true. in 1877 in the town of Prescott and then rebuilt in 1901 after a devastating fire, this is when it took its current name. Created by a man called D.C. Thorne, he opened it in a place that was at the time known as Whiskey Row, and his was one of over 40 saloons. Over the course of time, most, if not all, of the other ones closed down, but this one remains. Damn, it's just one surviving saloon. That's pretty cool, like the history behind it. The Prohibition era, while the saloon closed down, a speakeasy continued to operate in the basement, then reopening upon the end of that period. 
Back to another Dakota but the North one, the oldest business in North Dakota is the Bismarck Tribune, a newspaper. Founded in 1873 in the town of Bismarck, taking its name from there, of course, created by a man called Clement A. Lounsbury. It's not a huge or super reputable newspaper when compared to others. Its biggest mark is its longevity, impressive especially at a time when many newspapers are going out of business. It did however win a Pulitzer Prize in 1938 for public service after publishing a series of articles called Self-Help in the Dust Bowl. The Dust Bowl was a period of severe dust storms that greatly damaged the agriculture of the American and Canadian prairies during the 1930s. I guess they published a guide on how to deal with them. I wonder if they've moved online. And I also wonder what the oldest newspaper in the US is. Because you've got like, the New York Times and stuff like that. I'd assume that's up there, but I don't actually know. Next is Alaska with the Alaska Commercial Company, a general store established in 1867. And this one is particularly interesting because it's the first on our list to trace its origin back to another country, as it was first Russia? established with a charter given by Catherine the Great of Russia at the time when the Russian Empire still controlled Alaska as their colony in North America. Some say it can even be considered a successor of the Russian American Company, founded wow. in 1799 that is so fascinating by emperor paul the first to establish new russian settlements there however in 1867 the u.s bought alaska from russia and so one year later this company was bought by u.s businessmen as well and it remains u.s owned up to today Damn. moving to idaho we have the joyce livestock company a farm established in the town of murphy in 1865 as the name indicates it's a farm and livestock producer i couldn't find much information about this one only that it's still owned by the same family it's an 11,000 acre ranch that raises cattle in montana we're back to another saloon the keeping it in the family you gotta love that what by that i mean they've just i guess they've passed the job down through generations that sounds mental what i just said Oh my god. Bale of Hay Saloon. I don't think they could have chosen it. It's just saloons, isn't it? Which is crazy to think that they had to go through the prohibition and they're still here. And there's still so many more to go. This is only 1863 and there's probably another 40 states to go. More stereotypical name. It was established in Virginia City in the year of 1863. However, it wasn't founded as a saloon. First beginning as a grocery and liquor store, it was only converted in 1890. Founded by a man called J.F. Store and then taken over by two others that year. They <coughs> owned the building next door, which was a stable, and so they named it Bay of Hail. From 1908 to 1946, the building was vacant, which makes its record as the oldest business in the state a little open for contesting. Okay. Moving to Wyoming, we have the Miners and Stockman's Steakhouse. Founded in 1862 in Hartville, Wyoming, the restaurant is situated in a former booming mining town today it's home to less than 100 people but at the time it was a popular spot for bank robbers cattle rustlers and other outlaws it was also apparently built from a remnant of the historical fort laramie next is nebraska which opens up a new sector banking there we go see banking will be here i think quite a few times nebraska's oldest business is the first national bank of omaha established in 1857 in omaha itself it was founded by two brothers, the Counts brothers. At first, they mainly traded in gold dust and buffalo hides and were involved in business with all the pioneers settling in or traveling through Nebraska at the time. See, I want to know, how do you start a bank in these times? Do you have to be rich already so you can have people borrowing for you, from you and then putting money? And how, like, surely you have to have quite a lot of money before you start a bank. So not any average Joe could just start and be like, yeah, let's just start this thing and then it's going to end up being this famous bank or whatever. Because you can't. You need to have money that I guess people will take from you and then you get back more of it or whatever like that, right? As time went on... Also, banks must have been a very fishy business. I mean, they still are to a degree for sure. But when they first began and when they were first being created, they must have been a very fishy business. I feel like if you wouldn't pay the bank banks back, you'd get in a bit more trouble like as opposed to now. But you obviously still get in a lot of trouble, but I feel like back in these times, you'd probably um, probably been like hunted down or something, right? I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but <laughs> that's what I'm sort of guessing. On, they developed and grew and were even among the first banks in the US to start issuing credit cards. Damn. Colorado's oldest business. When were credit cards? You know, I gotta see it. Actually, no, I'm just gonna leave it. Nah, actually, I do wanna see. When. Oh, no. Were credit cards invented? 
While, com while closed loop charge cards began with retail oil and travel companies in the early 1900s, it wasn't until the 1950s when what we know as the modern credit card was born. Damn. So they've been getting off for a bit of time then. You get to 75 years. This is actually 19 years older than the state itself, R&R &R Market. It's a general wow. store opened in 1857 by a man called Dario Gallegos, who invested $452 to start it. All inflation calculators only go far as back as 1913 for the value of the dollar. If it had been $452 in 1913, it would equate to over 14000 today. So yeah, he saved up a probably his life savings so in 1857 it would mean even more than that yeah. if gallegos sounds like a spanish name to you you're right the business was established by a family of spanish conquistadors the family owned the business until 2017. it survived wow. an attack by native americans in 1858 and fires in 1895 and 1945 that almost destroyed it in Jeez. washington the oldest business is a wealth management company laird norton co founded in 1855 I didn't even know wealth management companies existed this long ago, but apparently they started as a frontier logging operation, meaning they chopped down trees and sold the wood, I think. Their logo today is still a set of trees, probably referencing that. They must have repurposed their business since, and I believe the Completely. same family still owns it today. Moving to Kansas, the oldest business is Davis Funeral <coughs> Chapel, a funeral home established in 1855 in the town of Levensworth. There isn't much info about this one, only that the founder moved with his family to Kansas from Kentucky due to the American Civil War. The same founder was eventually elected mayor of that town. All the way in Nevada, Genoa Bar is the oldest business located precisely in the city of Genoa. It dates back from 1853 in the heart of Carson Valley. It also predates Nevada as a state by 11 years. Wow. Once frequented by such historic figures such as Mark Twain or Teddy Roosevelt, the bar is decorated Damn. with countless original oil paintings and photographs from early pioneer days. And there's even an original wanted poster from 1865 offering a reward for President Abraham Lincoln's then unknown killer. Moving back east to Iowa is Brightback's Country Dining, a restaurant that opened up in 1852 under a federal permit issued by the president Millard Fillmore. I didn't know presidents issued restaurant permits at the time. It's been owned by the Bright Box since 1891 and is in its sixth generation of family ownership. Then Damn. Florida. In 1851, Pensacola Hardware Company opened its doors and remains open until today. There's not much to it. It's a family business. They sell hardware. It's managed to stay open up to modern times and is also one of the 50 oldest companies in the US. In Utah, we have another newspaper as the oldest business, Deseret News, taking its name from the word honeybee in the Book of Mormon. As the I wonder how these, like some of these old newspapers are now seen because newspapers now, a lot of them are just, just it's just like you don't really, it's just like stuff to get clicks or to get people to read it or whatever. So it's not necessarily like real stories or just, just over, I don't know how to say it, but just some newspapers are very, very bad. But because these are old, you just sort of almost just think, okay, well, this is an old newspaper. I'm going to already trust this, but I have no idea. If you're someone who's read these newspapers or the news from these sites from these companies, are they any good? Because I've not heard of them, but I don't know why I would have heard of them if I'm not from the US. This was the territory chosen by the Mormons to attempt to establish their own state. The newspaper was founded in 1850 in Salt Lake City. The connection of the name is relevant because the newspaper is actually owned by the Mormon church itself. In fact, it was founded by them at the time as well. It was a daily publication until 2021 when it switched to weekly. In Oregon, it's not a bar. There's a daily publication for 170 years, fair enough. Bar, but a beverage bottler founded in the town of Astoria in 1849, Van Dusen Beverages first started as a general store and then switched areas. In 1947, they became an official local bottler for Pepsi and in fact market themselves as being the smallest Pepsi bottler in the world, although they also bottle other drinks. All the way in Hawaii, Amfac Incorporated is the oldest business. A general store opened in 1849 in Honolulu by German immigrant Heinrich Ackfield. During World War I, it was seized by the government and sold to local Hawaiians. It was initially a dry goods store and sugar business. Now it's a coffee farm and land development company. <laughs> Completely different. It has since changed its name to Kanapali Land. Moving to California, the oldest business there is Ducomun, a manufacturing company established. Kind of crazy how California is on this list already. 
I mean, I would have thought, I guess, I guess it does make sense because people moved here for the, like, for specific reasons. Will this be related to gold? I don't know. In 1849 in Santa Ana, here a change in sector was also key to its survival and growth. It started as a general store, oh. became a metal distributor during World War I and World War II, mostly to supply the building of planes and the latter. They specialized in this and now they provide materials to NASA. What the? In Wisconsin, fuck? Minya's craft brewery was. That's a complete 180 on the business ideas and stuff, but you gotta rate it. They've just gone with the times. Established in 1845, it's actually the second oldest brewery in all of the US. Again, not much to it. It survived the Great Depression, Prohibition, and a fire. It's weird how many of these businesses burned down throughout time. All the way south in Texas is the Imperial Sugar Company. A unique case on this list, the city it's in actually takes its name from the company being called Sugarland, and the company's crown logo is actually also featured in the city's seal. Imperial Sugar was founded in 1843, and that is pretty much it. They produce sugar. In Tennessee, we have another funeral home, Austin and Bell. They were originally a cabinet shop founded in 1842. They happened to make caskets as well, and then eventually became a funeral home altogether. Um. It's still a family business up to today. Moving to Missouri, we have O'Malley's Pub, which is now a part of the West Brewing Company. It was founded in 1842 in the town of Weston. 100% it was a, an Irish person who founded this company. I mean, that's I'm trying to claim like this is a crazy thing to say, but that's obvious, right? It's hidden under the ground with a cellar over 50 feet underground. Sorry if for some of these there isn't much added information or history. It's just because it wasn't available anywhere or it just isn't too interesting. Next is Illinois with C.D. Peacock, a jewelry store founded in Chicago in the year of 1837, originally established as the House of Peacock, founded by a family with that last name who ran the business until selling it in 1969. It managed to survive the Great Chicago Fire in 1871 <coughs> and now has many stores across the city. Yeah, I mean, if you're, if you're a company in Chicago, you've probably done quite well. Indiana's oldest business is Register Publications, a company that owns a set of newspapers established in 1836 in Lawrenceburg. Next is Alabama with Bromberg's, another jewelry store opened by a Prussian immigrant, Frederick Bromberg. In they love the jewelry stores. 1836. A fun fact, Bromberg's son would go on to be elected a member of the U.S. Congress in 1873. New Mexico's is adequately named in Spanish, El Farol, established in Santa Fe in 1835. Initially, it was a saloon known as Cantina del Canon that served food and drinks. The building's ownership has changed hands several times up to today. Moving to Michigan, its oldest business is George Jerome & Co, a civil engineering company from 1828. It's still ran by the same family and is on the sixth generation of father-son cycle. Damn. In 1828, Edwin Jerome moved from New York to what was at the time still mostly territory controlled by Native Americans to survey and chart the territory. He eventually stayed and helped build the city of Detroit itself. Flipping in hell. Arkansas, the Rose Law Firm is the oldest business established in the town of Little Rock in 1820. Oh, now over 200 years ago. 20. It's the third oldest law firm in the U.S. altogether and was also created before Arkansas was even a state. At the age of 22, Robert Crittenden was appointed as Lieutenant Governor of the Arkansas Territory by President James Monroe and he was responsible for organizing it. He was governor for a year and then entered into partnership with Chelster Ashley to start practicing law. Funnily enough, the Rose name comes from a partner that joined further ahead. Next is Ohio with another restaurant and bar, The Golden Lamp, which has been around since 1803 and has hosted at least 12 US presidents that visited to eat. Oh, so it's actually a very like prestigious restaurant. Fair enough, 12. 12 presidents of Eaton there. there. Jonas Seaman traveled from New Jersey to Ohio and spent $4 for a license to operate a house of public entertainment in the newly founded village of Lebanon. Over 200. These village names are so wild. You've got oh, town name or city names, Genoa, and um, it's just a Lebanon. There's been other ones that have been said that it's so fascinating to me that these are 20 years. names or countries from obviously around the world. Later, it is still there. Operating since 1802, 
DuPont is Delaware's oldest business. It's a manufacturing business, initially a gunpowder mill, but now one of the world's largest chemical manufacturers. It was founded in See, yeah, I feel like I have heard of this. 1802 by French immigrant Eleuther Irene Dupont, using capital raised in France and machinery imported from there as well. The company grew quickly, and by the mid 19th century, it had become the largest supplier of gunpowder to the US military, supplying one third to one half of the powder used by the Union Army during the American Civil War. Then Vermont, with the Fort de Kendoroga Ferry operating since 1799, the first state of our list with a business dating back to the 18th century. It's a cable ferry crossing Lake Champlain and connecting Vermont to New York. It's the oldest ferry operation in all of the US. Moving all the way to Kentucky. Jim Beam, damn. Oh, of course I know that. I mean, that's an alk, is it, oh, it's um, a whiskey? We have Jim Beam's Distillery, founded in Claremont in 1795. I think. It's apparently now one of the most popular bourbon companies in the world. Well, okay, I'm not good at my alcohols, all right? It's all the same to me. World, George Washington was president when they started the business, and putting these dates into perspective by pairing them to historic figures or events really allows us to understand just how old they actually are. That is fascinating to me, man. I mean, I guess if you're a company who's from this long ago, you're gonna have to be somewhat like <clears throat> well known to a degree, <clears throat> to a degree, right? My fucking, I'm always getting frogs in my throat. Mississippi's oldest business is its King Tavern from 1789. When the British moved in and established the nearby Fort Panmer, the King's Tavern building was originally built to be a block house for the fort. This one is apparently closed and for sale now. So, hey, if you want to own one of the oldest businesses in the US, this is your chance. Uh -huh. North Carolina's oldest business is the Tavern in Old Salem. More taverns. It's apparently known for its Moravian chicken pie, as the area was home to many immigrants from Moravia at the time. It actually dates from earlier, 1771, but it burnt down and was rebuilt in 1784 due to its high importance for the local Moravian community. Then West Virginia, where the Greenbrier is the oldest business, a hotel set up in 1778. It has hosted 26 US presidents since its creation. It was built where it is due to the White Sulphur Springs. Guests would go there for their healing properties. In yeah. South Carolina is another restaurant, McGrady's Tavern, established in 1778 in Charleston. A fun fact, the guy who established the tavern was a leader in Charleston militia in the American Revolutionary War. When Charleston fell to the British in 1780, McGrady was arrested and taken to prison in St. Augustine, where he was held until 1781, having to temporarily shut down the business. Jesus. Moving to Louisiana, from here on out, all businesses are officially older than the country they are in, the US. That is so wild. That is so wild. Lafitte's blacksmith shop was established in 1772 in New Orleans. It dates back to the time when the territory was ruled by the Spanish. Legend says it belonged to the brother of the famous Jean Lafitte, a French pirate and privateer. Speaking of pirates, Georgia's oldest business is the Pirate's House in Savannah, established in 1753. It's an historic tavern which first opened as an inn for seafarers and fast became a meeting point for pirates and sailors. Going into the top 10 states with the oldest companies, in Maryland, 1750 is the founding date for the oldest business, Middleton- More ta- I guess around this time, right, taverns were- <clears throat> That's where like most of the fun you could have would be, right? Because you're not gonna have the things you can do now. So it does kind of make sense. But the fact that they've gone on and they're still here today is so wild. Like, I wonder what the oldest pub in the UK is, because that's kind of the equivalent, right? It's probably like 18, probably like, the, I don't know, 11th century, 12th century. The tavern was founded this year and has been frequented by various members of Congress throughout history. It was established by Horatio Middleton, initially operating as an inn for seafaring men, figures such as George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin, and members of the Continental Congress frequented the place as well. Crazy. In Pennsylvania, the Roland Company dates back to 1732. It's a manufacturing business which started manufacturing shovels and since switched to manufacturing power transmission products, whatever those are. New Jersey's oldest business is Barnborough Inn, established in 1720 in the town of Sc Okay, now the the like the the <clears throat> the the year that they were created is now going like crazy. Like it's probably going to get to like the 17th century. Well, not much to be said about this one. It's just an inn. 
Rhode Island is next, and we can really see how the states with the oldest businesses are in fact the ones on the East Coast, yeah, especially the Northeast. Its oldest business is Kenyon's Grist Mill, established in 1696, the first one that dates back to as early as the 17th century. However, the current standing mill building was only built in 1886. It was a business first established to grind the native corn using European techniques. Dang. Next is New York, whose oldest business is the Saunderskill Farm from 1680, originally granted to Hendrik J. Schoonmaker in 1663 as payment for military service. The family's original 300 acres have been continuously farmed since its creation. Going into the top five oldest state businesses, we have Maine with the Seaside Inn, a hotel from 1667. This one is super impressive. It was established by a man called John Gooch, who was commissioned by an agent of King Charles II of Britain. What? The inn has been in continuous operation by the Gooch family since its inception and as of 2018 was owned by the 12th generation descendants. Mad. Moving to Massachusetts, we have another farm and from here on to the oldest they're actually all farms. Barkers. Yeah, that's not a surprise, I guess. In these times, far I mean, of all times, farms were important. But I guess in these times, it's a lot easier to have a, not easy, but to have a farm is like, as a company would have been a lot more like guaranteed to be a success. Farm stand was established in 1642 in North Handover. The Barker family still owns it and is in its 11th generation. They specialize in apples, but also grow other fruits. Field View Farm in Connecticut opens up the top three, established in the town of Orange in 1639. It's the fourth oldest business in the U.S. overall, established by Thomas Hine and his family in 1639. It has been under family ownership for 12 generations. It mainly produces dairy products, but also sells agricultural equipment. New Hampshire's oldest business is Tuttle's Red Barn from 1632. They've expanded nearly 400 years ago and there's still one more to go from an original 20 acre farm to 134 acres john Tuttle established it when he arrived in the u.s with a grant from charles ii of england as well and finally shirley plantation in virginia which is considered the oldest business in all of the united states it's also a farm this place I've, i swear i've seen this place in red dead redemption i'm almost certain i've seen this house in red dead redemption that's 410 years old. In Charles City and was established in 1613. It initially only grew tobacco that it then shipped back to England. We can see pictures of it both in its early days and now. And it's interesting how it looks like those buildings in the game Red Dead Redemption. There we go. So those are the oldest businesses in each US state. Do you have any additional information? Or I mean, damn. This is, I'm actually surprised that, like, because after like the first 25, I was like, okay, I'm not going to know any. Then I knew, I didn't know Jim Beam would have, I mean, I know it obviously is a massive alcohol company, but for it to be that, like, one of the biggest alcohol companies in the world, and it's that old as well, is pretty mental. Um, but yeah, hopefully you, you enjoyed this, um, this video, and I think he said he did that in this video for the oldest company for each country. And I think that could be really interesting as well. But yeah, let me know your thoughts and until next time, peace.